God bless you, Dawes Road family, and the Lord bless you as well, those of you who've tuned in online, and may the Lord grant his great blessing to us. Of course, of course, God wants to bless as we look to him. Jesus wants you to be happy. So we come to our, the, our time of teaching. Let's turn in our Bibles to Revelation chapter 22, the last chapter of the book of the Bible, Revelation chapter 22. We want to take a look at a verse or two there that I trust will be a, a huge encouragement to you and will, of course, bring in some other scriptures because Jesus wants you to be genuinely happy. So let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your heart's desire that your people would know your joy would know your happiness. And Father, as we just take one slice of that, that, that uh, drew us uh, to, uh, in, in the book of the Revelation, Father, I pray that you grant great grace to myself and to your people, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Jesus wants you to be happy. So if you, ever buy, if you have your Bibles, let's turn to Revelation chapter 22, and let's just sit on that for just a moment. Revelation chapter 22, last chapter of the Bible. And here we go, verse seven. Jesus is speaking and he says this, look, I am coming soon. As a matter of fact, that's what this whole book, the book of Revelation is really all about. Jesus is coming and he's coming soon. Now I know that it's been a long time that we've been waiting for him, but be patient, be patient. In God's sense of time, this is just a very short period of time. And Jesus promises he is coming soon, so that should encourage us. As a matter of fact, if I just back it up a verse to verse 6, it does say this. The angel said to me, these words, speaking of the entire book of the Revelation, are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God who inspires the prophets, sent his angel to show his servants the things that must soon take place. So this is what it's all about. That's what this book is about. It really is all about this. Jesus is coming soon, and he's coming as King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. So now, verse 7. Look, verse 7. Look, I am coming soon. He's coming quickly. He is coming soon. And then he says this. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy written in this scroll. Blessed. Blessed. Happy, happy. You see, Jesus wants you to be happy. And in, in anticipation of his coming again, Jesus wants you to be happy. Now, if I were to ask you, how many of you really want to be happy? Of course, hands would be raised all over this, this sanctuary. Huh. Of course, we want to be happy. God's designed it in us as human beings to want happiness. We want genuine joy. And Jesus said, blessed, happy, happy. Now, in the original Greek, there's a couple of words for the word happy, um, uh, or blessed, sorry, uh, blessed. Let me, let's go back to, to blessed. There's a couple of words that are, are blessed, blessed. Uh, one word, one, one of those words is the idea that, that we are given blessings. We are given blessings. So for instance, when I take a look at a passage like Revelation, or sorry, Ephesians chapter one, Ephesians chapter one, there's a whole list of blessings, and so then we are obviously blessed. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1, let me pick it up at verse 3. Praise, or blessed, uh, be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. And then these next few verses are, are really a run-on sentence in the original Greek, just blessing after blessing after blessing. Now, uh, we as a family, when we have Thanksgiving dinner, there's about, just with the kids and grandkids, there's about 30 of us. And so we gather together, and just before we enjoy a, a, a scrumptious meal, uh, we join hands, and we, uh, of course, we want to say grace. We want to ask God's blessing on the food, uh, consecrating it to our bodies. But before we do that, we just quickly go around the circle. What is one thing you're thankful for? And of course, there's 30 very, very quick responses family and health, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Those are wonderful blessings. Many of those blessings that we mentioned around at Thanksgiving are, are obviously a sort of gravy, uh, uh, um, icing on the cake, as it were. Uh, what Paul does here in Ephesians chapter 1, he gives us the big blessings, the spiritual blessings, the blessings that last forever, which should be so huge to us. So for instance, verse 4, he would say in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, for God chose us in him, 
before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love. So there is, he's chosen us. He loves us. He predestined us for adoption to sonship, which means that we're inheritors of his glory. God's not being selfish and keeping it all for himself. This is amazing. God wants to share his glory with his children, with his family. Wow, praise God. Um, through Jesus Christ, in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, grace, uh, unmerited favor, which he has freely, freely given to us in the one that he loves. In him we have redemption, freedom through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us, wisdom, understanding, etc., etc., etc. We can keep on going. Those are blessings. We are blessed. We are blessed. So that's one of the words that underpine that word or undergird that word blessed in the scriptures. Um, but there's another Greek word that we translate blessed. And it's the idea of being being, being happy, content, fulfilled. So, yes, we are blessed, but we also feel blessed. We feel blessed. There's, um, there's one of the folks in our church family has a little, little uh, saying on their, uh, on their social media there, uh, too blessed to be stressed. <laughs> they really capture both of those ideas. We are blessed. So I'm going to feel blessed. Amen? Amen? So there's the sense of being blessed, but there's also the sense of feeling the blessings, as it were. Now, it's very interesting. As we go to um, um, that, that passage in Revelation that we want to look at in just a moment, uh, it's the idea of feeling blessed. Blessed are those, Jesus is saying. So Jesus wants you to be blessed. He wants you to feel blessed. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to be content. He wants you to be fulfilled. Now, if I were to ask you, what would it take for you to be fulfilled? What would it take for you to be happy? What would it take for you to feel blessed? What would it feel? What would it take for you to feel fulfilled? What would it take? I, I know that many of us, if we are adopting a world's sense of values, which is a dangerous thing to do. We need to adopt God's values. We would say things like, oh, riches, um, uh, just having everything you want, uh, being well-fed, as it were, um, uh, party time all the while, well, um, you know, um, uh, lots of uh, views on my, my TikTok or whatever it is. Uh, you know, people just really like me and that kind of thing. Those, would, that, those things would make me happy. Those things would make me happy. Very interesting. Jesus gave you a list of beatitudes. Beatitudes. What should characterize the true followers of Jesus Christ? And some of them, and it's, let me just take you to Luke's um, account of that, that, that saying of the beatitudes because it's very interesting. He mentioned some of them, uh, but it's Matthew gives us the finer details. And we'll go to Matthew in just a moment. But he also gives us the, the flip side of these blessings. So for instance, uh, Luke would record Jesus saying this, blessed are you who are poor for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the son of man, because of Jesus. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy because great is your reward in heaven for that is how their ancestors treated the prophets. Now Luke then gives us the flip side, which Matthew doesn't. But Luke gives us the flip side, and, and he records Jesus saying this, But woe to you who are rich, for you've already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when everyone speaks well of you, for that is how their ancestors treated the false prophets. Woe. Hang on here. Jesus remind us, that riches and, and, and a lot of likes on our social media is not the source of our happiness. Let me take you to Matthew chapter 5, because this is very contrary to the way the world wants to, uh, to, to, to feel blessed. How, how do I feel happy? How do I feel contentment? How do I feel fulfillment? Jesus gives us the keys to that as he describes genuine followers of Jesus. 
Matthew chapter 5. Probably a very familiar passage of Scripture when I begin to read it. Because it says this, Jesus, after he sat down on the mountainside, begins to share with his disciples and with the crowd that's in front of him. He says this, blessed. The word there, blessed, is happy, content, fulfilled. Same word as in Revelation chapter 22, verse 7. Blessed, happy, content. Blessed are the poor, where? In spirit. It's not talking about bank accounts here. It's about spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You see, the world's value is, I don't need anyone. I'm a self-made person. So you need to respect me because I've, I, I, I've done it. I've achieved it. Jesus says, if you really want to experience genuine happiness, contentment, and fulfillment, recognize that you are poor before God, that you need him, that you need Jesus. And then you will understand that you're, the kingdom of heaven is yours. Wow. It's the very opposite. The poor in spirit, but heaven is mine. Wow. Blessed are those who mourn. Now, he's not talking about crying because someone died or some adverse situations happened in your life. No, he's talking about mourning for our personal sin and the way that we've offended the truly holy God. And that's why we need Jesus who died on the cross for our sins because he had to pay the penalty for our sins. When we're truly sorry for our sins, Jesus would say, blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. Hallelujah. When you're genuinely sorry for your sins, then you can experience the joyous forgiveness of God. Blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth. Now, we're thinking in our world that if you really want to get ahead, you've got to run over everybody. Get, push everyone every, out of the way. And Jesus says the very opposite. You know, blessed are the meek, the gentle, who step back second place in line, or third place, or fourth place in line. Because actually, in the, in the, in the end of all things, the planet's yours. You're going to be the rulers and the reigners with Jesus. Oh, man, that's amazing. So blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Jesus would say, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for wealth, power. No, no, no. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be what? Filled. See, they will experience contentment, fulfillment, and happiness. A blessed, we keep on going. Blessed are the, the merciful, for they will be shown Mercy, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. And there's nothing more powerful, more beautiful, more infinitely awesome than seeing and knowing God. Wow, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. See, that's it's totally an opposite paradigm to the way the world wants to experience happiness. Because the way the world wants to experience happiness through their greed and their and, and their trump tromping over other people doesn't bring genuine contentment, doesn't bring genuine happiness or fulfillment. Doing it God's way brings happiness. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, so let me take you with that in mind now. Let's go back to Revelation chapter 7, or sorry, Revelation chapter 22 and verse 7. And, and here it is. Jesus says, I want you to be happy. Look, I am coming soon. I'm coming soon. Hallelujah. When finally, finally we get to enjoy all the rich glory of the Father and his pleasures in the new Jerusalem, the new heaven, the new earth, where there's no more dying. There's no more, no more crying. <laughs> there, there's no more pain. No more broken bones or broken hearts. No, joy forever, glorious living with God's people in the presence of God himself and in the presence of Jesus. Wow, wow, Jesus is coming. Look, I'm coming soon. And so then Jesus says, now here is the, 
the secret or the key. Let me put it this way. The key, it's not a secret. It's the key to being happy. Blessed is the one who, what? Wow, perfect, beautiful. Blessed is the one who, what? Walks in obedience, who keeps the words of the prophecy written in this scroll. Simply obey the word of God. So some of you are saying, <laughs> well, Arnie, is, it really, is that really that simple to be happy? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, you know, just love Jesus and obey the word. That's pretty simple, right? Um, hold on, maybe not. Because he says the words found in the, uh, the, the words of the prophecy of, in the scroll. And so now I have to look through the book of the Revelation. What, what, what are some of the storylines in the book of the Revelation? And they're terif some of them are terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. I mean, there's a, there's a trio of wicked, evil, an unholy trio of characters that are aligned to, to, against you as a follower of Jesus, against you as one who wants to love God, Satan, the Antichrist. John describes him as the beast. Satan and the Antichrist and the false prophet. A, a, a trio of a evil, wicked characters who are aligned against you and want to destroy you. Satan, Satan. Revelation chapter 12. Day and night in the presence of God, what? Accusing you. Saying to God the Father, he's bad, bad, bad. She's bad, bad, bad. They don't deserve heaven. They deserve hell. They ought to be coming with me down to the bottomless pit. That's what they deserve. You know, and I know he's a liar and he's a murderer, but he's, he's right here. I mean, he's right in that situ situation, in that scenario. He's correct. I, 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 am, I am bad compared to the holiness of God. There is none holy like our God. Wow. Perfect, bright, pure, holy, set apart. There is none like him. And then I compare myself. I'm a, I'm a man of unclean lips living among a people of unclean, unclean people. Wow. 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 I don't know, how can I possibly have victory? How can I possibly have happiness in that? Well, I, I realize what Jesus has done for me. You see, Jesus, he went to the cross, not because he was pushed on it, not because they took him and they nailed him so he couldn't get off. No, he could have got off. He could have got off the cross. He had, that, he had that power. He's the son of God. He's God in the flesh. And he had the authority and the power to get off the cross, but he did not. He stayed on the cross. He went to the cross deliberately, willingly, giving his life at the cross, his blood pouring out of his body. And that blood was, a, as it were, a covering for our sin. It was the payment for our rebellion and sin. And Jesus paid it all. Wow, wow. And so when Satan accuses, he might be right. But our response is this. I'm forgiven because of the blood of Jesus. I'm forgiven. And because I'm forgiven, my sins are washed away. And because I'm forgiven, <laughs> I'm accepted by the Father. And I may not deserve heaven, but the Father has granted me the privilege and honor of belonging to heaven, to the kingdom of heaven. And I belong to God because of the blood of Jesus. That's where the victory is. That's where the victory is. The Antichrist comes along. By his pressure, he's energized. He's energized by Satan. Actually, in, in one of other John, the Apostle John's other writings, he says, well, we know that the Antichrist is coming. And even now, the spirit of Antichrist is here. And, and that was written, you know, just shortly before 100 AD. So for the last 2,000 years, the spirit of Antichrist, this opposition against Jesus has been existing. The world has its own values, and they're not in line with the values of Jesus. But the world wants to pressure you and, and wants you to conform to its values and its truths. Uh, and, 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 and if you don't, <laughs> they'll persecute you. They may even kill you. And there's coming a person who will be energized by saying, he'll be the ultimate antichrist. 
And he will kill many Christians because they do not uh, follow him, but rather they have stood up and said, we will follow Jesus. We will not bend the knee. We will not surrender. It may cost us our lives, but those who follow Jesus all the way inherit eternal life. And so we do not surrender to the pressure of the Antichrist. And we're not deceived by the false prophets' deceptive um, miracles. Just because he does a miracle doesn't mean we believe everything he says. No, we compare it to the word of God, and we're not deceived. And so just because he can do some miraculous things, we, we don't turn to that. We turn to Jesus because he is the way, the truth, and the what? He is the, the way, the truth, and the life. He is truth. So I follow Jesus. I follow Jesus. But it's going to be a terrifying time. It is a terrifying time to be a follower of Jesus. What do you mean happy? What do you mean happy then, Jesus? Jesus, you said in, in, in Revelation chapter 22, verse 7, look, I'm coming soon. Blesses the one who keeps the words of the prophecy written in the scroll. I've got the, the devil accusing me. I've got the God Satan, or, or sorry, the Antichrist trying to pressure me into its values and mold, and its mold. I've got the, the, the false prophet who's going to do all sorts of miracles and try to deceive me. What do you mean happy? Happy, that's what it says in the scroll here, that I've got to push through that by the power and the grace of God. Yes. How does that make me happy? Well, I think part of the answer, wonderfully, it may be the complete answer, but certainly the part of the answer is found in a few verses later, verse 12. Love this. Jesus once again says this in Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. Come, come, see it with me. See it with me. Look at it with, look at it with me. Jesus says this, look. Look, I am coming soon. Isn't that what he said in verse 7? He says it again. Now, if Jesus said it once, we can believe him. But he's now repeating himself. And, and folks, that should just secure that thought and that truth in our hearts and our minds. This is so important. Jesus is coming again. So stand firm. Stand firm in his truth. Why? Why? Because you'll be happy. Why? Oh, here it is. My reward is with me. And I will give to each person according to what they have done. Whoa! Oh, he, he's coming with his reward. The Greek word there is, is uh, mythos. Mythos. And, and uh, our, our Old English Bible has translated that Greek word, translated that Greek word misoth, mythos, uh, to say recompense. We would probably translate it to uh, uh, paycheck. Paycheck. I mean, many of you love Fridays, don't you? You've worked hard all week, and your boss gives you a paycheck, your reward for faithful service in the company this past week. Yes, yes. Jesus is coming with his paychecks for those who have faithfully served him. And it's rich, and they're eternal, praise God. So, so why do I have happiness when I'm being pressured and accused and, 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 and deceived? Oh, because oh, as I push through by the grace of God, there is a reward coming. Jesus is bringing the paychecks. Jesus is bringing his reward for us. Hallelujah. And they're not just simple little things. They are eternal joys, eternal pleasures, eternal blessings. Hallelujah. Praise his name. So I press on. So I press on. Um. It's like going to the doctor and he says, you've got an issue here. And, um, and perhaps the treatment is a bitter pill or maybe it's a painful surgical procedure. But the doctor says, if you take this bitter pill or take this or undergo this painful surgical procedure, you will be healed. You will be well, uh, no more pain, and you'll have full mobility to enjoy life to the full. Well, guess what, folks? I will take that bitter pill with a smile. I will undergo that painful procedure with a smile because I know that the future outcome is beautiful and bright. Folks, that's why we're happy. This is why we're happy. Why are the, the poor in spirit happy? Because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Why are those blessed who are persecuted? Why? Because theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Why am I happy? as I obey the word of God, even though it'll cause my arch enemy to accuse me before the Father, the Antichrist pressure me 
The, the, the false prophet deceived me. Why would I? How could I possibly be happy? Why? Because I look past all of that and I see the reward and I rejoice in that. Hallelujah, praise God. So my dear, my dear family, my dear friends, those who are listening, please, please put your trust in Jesus. It is worthwhile. Those who do not receive Christ do not inherit any of this, well, but will be thrown outside. But those who push through by the grace of God and the power of God, and they stand firm in Christ, knowing that he is their Savior and the Lord, happy, 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 because great is your reward for all eternity. God bless you, strengthen you, and give you joyous courage in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen.